Gentle winds blew across Ruth's face as maple leaves tickled her nose. She felt the urge to sneeze, but fought it back with an effort. She scrunched up her face and tried to resist the sudden maddening need to let out the sneeze. And finally, unable to hold it in, she buried her face in her arm and expelled it. She stifled it marginally well. She winced at the sound, worried she'd woken up her companion, who she assumed was asleep none too far away. She sat up and brushed leaves and twigs from her long blonde hair. The sun was rising, but the clouds overhead gave an overcast air to the world that left a foggy and misty feel to everything. A lake could be seen a good 100 meters or so away, and the gentle mist that drifted above it gave an ethereal look to it all. She gazed at it with a sensation of awe. She felt around for her sword, and, taking comfort in wrapping her fingers around the familiar handle, she raised it up to her lap and inspected it. It was a bit smudged from laying by her on the earth, and she was used to this, though, roughing it and camping on the ground. It was common enough, and according to her companion, this was what he preferred. Speaking of, she found her gaze drifting to where Ultor had been sleeping. Ultor, are... She stopped herself, fearful she would wake him, but then saw that he was not there. He had already left. His sleeping mat was still there, so he hadn't left entirely, but where had he gone? Standing up and putting on her armor, she began searching for signs of the lone warden, finally catching sight of him by the bank of the lake. She sighed and walked down to join him. It had been a whole week since she and Ultor had left the mire after having saved the life of a daimyo's daughter and taken down a slaver's camp. With no real direction, Ruth had asked to travel with Ultor for a time, to which the stoic but mysterious warden had agreed. She had tried not to be annoying and remained mostly silent during their travels, only daring to speak or ask questions when it felt appropriate. He was not the easiest individual to dine or work with. He was silent often and spoke only when the need arose, and yet he never dismissed Ruth and was willing to hear her when she had a question or a concern. In a way, Ruth felt fortunate to be his traveling partner. Since crossing the border into Valkenheim, the days and nights were colder and the air always foggy with mist and cloud. There was a chill in the air, and Ruth could feel the potential of snow. As she finally drew near Ultor, she noticed that he wasn't wearing his helmet, though he was still armored. Ruth removed her own helm and walked behind him. "'Sleep well?' she asked. Ultor nodded, his hair blowing gently in the morning breeze, his dark eyes the color of charcoal and burning just as intensely. "'As well as I'd hope,' he answered. "'Well, that's ominous,' Ruth giggled. Ultor favored her with a smile." Bad dreams. They can keep me up some nights, he admitted. Sometimes when I sleep, I see memories of battles and losses that I'd rather forget. Ruth gave a nod at that, thinking on her own battles. Ultor sighed and turned his face back to the lake. And you? How was your sleep? Refreshing, she answered simply, though it was quite cold. Yes, I figured a daughter of these lands wouldn't be so bothered, Ultor joked. I was born to these lands. It doesn't mean I'm accustomed to it, Ruth pouted and Ultor shrugged. You get used to it. Say so you've been here before, Ruth inquired. Plenty. He then set down his sword and his helm, stretching his arms and legs some. Ruth looked on curiously and walked to stand beside him. Why did we come this way? she asked. Is there something we must do in Valkenheim? Some mission or cause? Nothing yet, he answered gruffly. But something always comes up. A skirmish, a bandit raid, abusive husband, orphan on the run. The more you travel, the more problems you find, and the chance comes to make them right. So we wander aimlessly until we find a wrong to right, Ruth asked, disbelief carefully hidden from her voice. Yes, Ulter answered, and to be blunt, I prefer it this way. Going where I choose, aiding those I wish to aid, fighting battles I wish to fight, not on the leash of some warlord or nobleman who would use me to further their own ends. I find it far more agreeable. I wasn't judging you. No, but you were being critical. And that's just as bad. Ulter answered, but, a tone, but the tone of his voice showed that he wasn't angry. If you're going to travel with me, Welp, you'll need to get used to that idea. You're not part of a legion. You're your own warrior. Ruth smiled at the thought, until he noticed Ulter removing his shoulder pauldrons. "'What are you doing?' she asked. "'Going for a swim,' he answered. Ruth blinked at that in disbelief. "'A swim? Well, why not? We're by a lake and I need the exercise,' Ultor shrugged. "'But it's freezing! You'll catch your death of cold!' Ruth cried. Ultor paused and looked at her with a smirk. 
Well, then make yourself useful then and start up a fire so I'll warm up when I'm done. Maybe even get breakfast started. Ruth watched as he removed the rest of his armor until he was just down to his skivvies and then walked into the water. Sighing in defeat, she turned on her heel and walked back up the bank to their makeshift camp, content to let Ultor swim while she worked to get food ready from their supplies. Getting the fire started wasn't difficult, but the cooking part was taking a little while. The cold air made it difficult for the meat to cook all the way through, and Ruth found herself turning the meat constantly on the spit she'd set up. However, as she focused on the meal, she began to feel a strange sensation, like she was being watched or followed. She turned, expecting to see Ultor, but he was still in the lake. She stood up, and her hand slowly went to her sword, but as it did, there came a low growl. Instinct took her quick, and she rolled away as a figure burst from the underbrush. With a feral roar, the figure, built like a man, face covered in hair and a pair of axes in each hand, came barreling at her. Ruth raised her sword in defense, and the berserker swung. She stopped the axe with her blade and then kicked him back, desperate to get her distance. She shot a quick jab at the intruder, only for the berserker to spin out of his way and snarl at her furiously. Ruth raised her sword up in a defensive stance. Lower the sword, knight! Another voice spoke, and Ruth turned to see another figure emerge from the brush. He was taller than the berserker, and with a more impressive beard. He had a large, round shield in hand and a sword in the other. Though wearing a helm, his look of pride and arrogance was plastered on his features. You're surrounded. I'd surrender if I were you. Ruth looked from him to the berserker, and finally to one last figure that emerged from behind the warlord. A young woman with shaved hair, piercings on her nose, ears, and lip, in a savage cloth for armor. She held a hatchet and dagger in hand and was sneering hungrily. Three Vikings, and they looked tough. Hand over your things, and maybe we'll let you walk away mostly in one piece, the warlord hissed. If you think I'll be intimidated by three feral brutes, she snarled. No, I don't think you'll be intimidated. But killed? Definitely, the warlord laughed. Krem, get her. The berserker lunged and Ruth dodged aside, allowing her blade to come up to meet his throat. But before she could complete the motion, the shaman darted forward and shoulder tackled Ruth, sending her rolling back. She rallied and quickly had to fend off the berserker, who was swinging down both axes at her. She countered the strike and managed to land a blow of her own on his chin, cutting it open. The berserker howled, but Ruth didn't have time to savor her victory as the shaman jumped on top of her and held her down. She took out her dagger and stabbed Ruth's shoulder. Letting out a scream of pain, the shaman laughed maniacally and then shrieked her own joy at achieving the kill. Ruth grit her teeth and tried to get up, but the pain in her shoulder kept her from putting weight on her arm, and the shaman's weight was holding her down. Ah, should have just given up, the warlord barked. Kill her already. The shaman stood up and raised her hatchet for the kill. Suddenly, the weight of the shaman was knocked away as a sword flew through the air like a javelin and impaled the shaman to the chest, knocking her off of Ruth and sailing back on her ass. Ruth sat up fast and recognized the sword. The berserker and warlord both froze and turned to see who had thrown it. Ultor was marching up the bank. He was back in his armor mostly, though it was dripping with water and glaring dangerously at the three Vikings. I can't even trust you to make a meal, can I? Ultor growled. Ruth frowned and sat up, picking up her sword. Who the hell? The warlord barked. Ultor turned to the shaman who was struggling to breathe as she grabbed at the blade that had impaled her. Ultor took the hilt and yanked it out, kicking the shaman in the face and leaving her body on the earth. So, which one of you dies first? Ultor asked. Krem, the berserker, roared in anger and attacked. You killed her! He bellowed. Ultor stepped out of the way of the axe and kicked the berserker's leg out from under him. Truly, your powers of observation are outstanding, he growled before swinging his sword and taking the berserker's head off at the neck. As the warrior sank to the ground, headless and pumping blood through his open neck, he then turned his attention back to the warlord. Ultor, I can handle him, Ruth tried to offer. Not with that wound, Ultor answered before turning back to the warlord. Don't move. Shamans sometimes poison their daggers. And even if she didn't, well, I doubt she's cleaned it recently, and you don't want to know where she's probably been. Who the hell are you? The sn warlord snarled. You think you're a real tough guy, huh? Ultor didn't answer as he raised up his sword on the defense. Well, you won't kill me so easily. Just hand over your shit, and I may forget I- You know, you've done a lot of talking, Ultor growled. But you're the only one who hasn't done any fighting. Please stop boring me and do something besides run your mouth. 
The warlord looked stunned and finally charged, shield forward, prepared to barrel through Ultor. Ultor dodged to the side and the warlord stopped to swipe at him with his sword. Ultor parried the light swing and shoved him back, swinging his sword down. The warlord tried to block with his shield, but the massive hunk of wood would knock us, was knocked aside as Ultor swung his free hand out to punch the warlord across the face. He rolled and stood back up. Ultor was shaking his sword a little to get the excess blood off of it, and then glared at the warlord. The warlord began to circle Ultor, shield on the defensive, and Ultor just groaned at him. Oh, would you just do something? Ultor snarled. Seeing his frustration, the warlord shot forward and struck out with his sword, only for Ultor to parry and sidestep the strike. Warlord then tried to headbutt him, but to his horror, Ultor stabbed his sword forward and plunged the blade deep through the warlord's face. He didn't even have time to scream as the tip ex exited out of the warlord's head. Man, you sure are boring. Ultor groaned before stepping back and removing the sword. The warlord fell dead. Ruth stared in disbelief. Only partly armored, dripping wet, and Ultor had dispatched three Viking warriors as if it had been nothing. Ultor, how? Don't move too much. Let's clean that wound. He walked to Ruth and lifted her up by the arm to walk her to the fire. How did you get here so fast? I saw you fighting and came running to help. Didn't even have time to dry off. If I get sick, it's your fault. My fault? If you'd actually fought that shaman and not just lay there. I was taken by surprise, Ruth pouted, and Ultor smirked, showing he was teasing her. In all seriousness, learn to be more aware. Weak bandits like that shouldn't be able to overwhelm you so easily. He inspected the knife wound and began to treat it with some alcohol he had in his supply pack. It's not deep. Should be fine in a few days. At least it's not your good arm. And how would you know which arm is my good arm? Ruth asked. I've watched you fight. I can read you pretty well, Ultor explained. Being able to understand how an opponent fights and what they will do makes the difference between living and dying. Take that berserker. He attacked at least three times with a forward lunging axe swing, meaning that's his favorite way of fighting. And the warlord kept his shield in front of him at all times, trying to mask his movements, playing a defensive game. Boring, but it's effective. It's hard to be offensive when they do that. You only watched them for a few minutes and you knew all that? Ruth cried. Doesn't take that long if you know what to look for, Ultor shrugged. He finally began wrapping cloth around the wound and sat back. That'll do for now. Let's check on that meat, huh? Ruth watched him move towards the fire to get warmed up and to pull the chicken meat off. She looked from her wounds to Ultor and frowned. Noticing her lack of movement, Ultor glanced at her. How do you do it? She asked. You're brave, skilled, and... And I couldn't even hold off three bandits. I'm just... Hey... I was joking earlier. You were caught off guard. You got nothing to be... I shouldn't be so helpless, Ruth cried. I have to be better than that. Ruth. Ultor set the chicken to the side and sat down in front of Ruth calmly, setting his helmet aside as well and looking her in the eyes. Listen, I've traveled across Ashveld, Valkenheim, the Mire. I've seen it all. I know weaklings when I see them. If you were just another pathetic weakling... I wouldn't have even entertained the idea of you traveling with me. Ruth looked at Ultor with a weak smile. Do you mean that? I wouldn't have said it if otherwise. Ultor then turned his attention back to the chicken meal. Like I said, I wake up to bad dreams of the things I'd like to forget. Battles and people that I lose. So while I'm awake, I have to focus even more with all I have not to lose anything. So I won't keep having those dreams when I'm asleep. Ruth beamed as Ulter began ripping off limbs of the cooked bird to eat. She couldn't help but once again be reminded at the sheer distance between her and the Punisher Ultor. It was a staggering thing to contemplate, and yet she was more excited than ever to try and close that gap, even if she knew in her heart it would never happen. Ultor was just too exceptional. 